Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for knee arthritis. Knee arthritis is a big problem. Arthritis overall is the nation's number one cause of disability. Over 25 million people in the U.S. suffer from osteoarthritis, and there's two additional types that are common, rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic. I mean, overall, there's over 50 different types of arthritis. About 10% of men and 13% of women aged 60 years or older demonstrate symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. Currently, there's over 600,000 knee replacements performed each year in the U.S. And estimates show that by 2030, total knee replacement surgeries are going to grow by over 670% to 3.5 million procedures per year. Now, there is a, a deficit in non-surgical treatments. Up until now, there have been plenty of non-surgical treatments that help to suppress pain, such as steroid injections with cortisone, bracing, anti-inflammatories by mouth or cream, cane, things like that that help to suppress pain, but they don't change the course of the disease. The closest treatment to date to a regenerative option that maybe helps to theoretically grow some more cartilage has been viscosupplementation with things like Synvisc. Now, regenerative medicine is finally here, and it offers the option for repair and regeneration of the arthritic knee, and also long-term relief. So when you have no more Band-Aid treatment, you can truly offer somebody the opportunity to avoid surgery um, long-term. So what are the elements to repair in knee arthritis? Well, you have loss of cartilage, you can have meniscal tears, um, whether or not there's an inflammatory component um, in the synovial fluid of the knee will vary, and there's also soft tissue overgrowth as well. Here's a study from 2008 on one patient that had bone marrow aspirated and then uh, the stem cells were cultured. And at 24 weeks post-injection, the patient had statistically significant cartilage and meniscus growth on MRI, as well as increased range of motion and decreased modified VAS pain scores. So granted, it was only in one patient with knee arthritis, but the results were fabulous. Now, a systematic review of the literature this year, uh, looking at stem cell injections for knee osteoarthritis, reviewed six randomized clinical trials all studies reported superior effectiveness for patient-reported outcomes, like the VAS pain score, uh, an arthritis index, uh, compared with controls at final follow-up, and the range was uh, two to four years. And they also showed superior radiological outcomes were found favoring stem cell injections. Here's a study looking at 182 patients who underwent a knee scope for osteoarthritis. Um, it compared mesenchymal stem cells plus PRP injection versus mesenchymal stem cells plus PRP on this fibrin glue scaffold that was implanted into the cartilage defect. And the results for both were excellent. Um, and when they did a second look, they showed that the implanted stem cells um, showed excellent cartilage growth. Now, uh, Hospital for Special Surgery did a study uh, last year looking at PRP therapy alone for knee arthritis. Uh, 15 patients followed for a year. On a pain scale commonly used called the visual analog scale, pain was reduced by 56% at six months and even more, 59% at one year. And the functional scores improved by a lot at one year. They actually did serial MRIs every few months and they showed no further cartilage loss in three-fourths of the patients. Here's a study looking at long-term follow-up of the uh, intraarticular injection of stem cells into patients with knee, ankle, or hip osteoarthritis. It was 18 patients out of Iran. Uh, they had bone marrow treatment with culturing. It was one injection. They followed them up for two and a half years, and all the patients exhibited therapeutic benefits. They could walk better, they had less pain, and their functional scores increased as well. Here's a study looking at amniotic fluid injections uh, for knee arthritis. Uh, they actually had three arms to the study. One was amniotic, one was orthovisc, and another was monovisc. So two dis different types of visco supplementation. So a lot of patients, 275. So at the 90-day outcome, uh, the percent of patients with greater than 40% pain improvement was 78% with amniotic versus 50 and 62% for the other treatments. And then when they looked at it again at six months, they showed that 
Um, for the Womax scale, the improvement was 54% with amniotic and 34% with uh, Synvisc. So the results were continued at six months, and this study is ongoing. Here's another amniotic fluid study, which is an ongoing one. They have 181 patients enrolled as of this presentation. Uh, 51 of them had reached the 90-day follow-up. 75% had over 40% pain relief. They looked at the visual analog, which is a pain reduction, and then Womac, which is a functional. And those had improved an average of 68% and 71% at the one-month mark. Um, and at 90 days, there's improvements increased to 82% for the Womac and 74% for the VAS. So very impressive results. When you look at amniotic fluid, it has a lot of components for repair and regeneration. It has about 75 growth factors, a lot of cytokines, which help suppress uh, inflammation, uh, collagen, hyaluronic acid, uh, messenger RNA. It also has mesenchymal stem cells. You know, some naysayers say that it doesn't, but a lot of them, a lot of them do because of the way that it's processed. If you don't radiate it and you use the right kind of preservative, you can get significant amounts of viable cells. For instance, the products that we supply um, do have viable stem cells, and that's been proven on a third-party assay. Uh, also, they have fibroblasts, keratinocytes, and epithelial cells. We truly want to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired. Our affiliated R3 centers of excellence are located nationwide and offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us today at r3stemcell.com or simply call us at 844 get STEM. Thank you very much for watching.